uh, released an album out in February, back in February. Uh, it's available on my website, jamesdupre.com. Uh, it's, uh, when I first put it out, it, it was a uh, top seller on cdbaby.com and it hit number 12 on uh, iTunes uh, as the uh, number 12 country album uh, for a few days. And then uh, after uh, I had the honor of going on uh, the Ellen DeGeneres show, last month, and after that it hit the number 68 spot on the Billboard Country uh, magazine, so uh, I was really excited about that. I uh, got some uh, great reviews on the album so far, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, this song here is called Deep Down. Uh, two or three places here to uh, to, to uh, let him let him showcase his his talent and uh, the, the area residents have just taken a, a real liking to him just like I have and uh, so um, I think people are a little intrigued at uh, his uh, course of getting into this business um, taking a fairly non-traditional approach in terms of a music career because you know, he does have uh, family responsibilities, and uh, he's a very devoted family man. And uh, the first time he came up, he stayed at my place that I have on the lake, and we uh, had a really good time getting to know each other. He brought his sons up. Uh, at that time, he had three under the age of four, and uh, has a, a very, very nurturing, uh, uh, you know, uh, wife uh, to those boys. So. We bought a little inflatable pool, and they enjoyed, you know, in the pool, and uh, so it was refreshing to see somebody pursuing a, a music career, and at the same time balancing that with a family life. You know that every good song starts with some really good writing. We also are very fortunate tonight to have with us an author who locally may not need an introduction, but has done so many good things in the literary, literary world, has written books like Write as Rain, Hot Fudge Sunday, um, uh, walking in Shadows, and one thing I'm very excited to read this weekend, she's written a, a, a new self-help type of book that helps book clubs or people that may be thinking about writing. So uh, when you meet, and it's Bev Marshall. Great to be home. <laughs> uh, I want to thank Ralph and Tina and all of you who worked so hard to put on this wonderful event for, and for allowing me to be a part of this special evening. Um, my grandfathers and nearly all of my O'Neill relatives were railroad workers, so I'm especially honored to be a part of this evening's fundraiser. As many of you know, and Ralph just told you, I was born in Macomb, and I spent an idyllic childhood here. At one time, I think I was related to everybody on Smithdale Row, which is now Veterans Boulevard, all the way out to the county line. Um, and my relatives, the Forrests, the Weddingtons, the O'Neills, they were all storytellers, especially the O'Neills. So when I was a little girl, um, I would sit on their various porches and listen to their tales and that musical laughter that always accompanied their jokes and their stories. And of course, years later, I got married to this man over here, a military man. And uh, he took me to the East Coast, the West Coast, states in between, and England. But no matter how far we moved or where we traveled, I carried those stories of my youth in my heart. And when I became a writer, my pen took me back to my roots here in Macomb. 
Many of my stories and all three of my books are set in Macomb, to which I gave the fictional name Zebulon, those of you who have read the books. Uh, I owe a great debt to my father, Ernest uh, Forrest, because he's the one who's told me many of the stories that are, is in my work. So tonight, I'm gonna read one of those stories he told me. I wrote it uh, years ago after he told me a tale about my uncle P.B. O'Neill and uh, a little another snippet about his friend Spencer McGee. So I put those two together and wrote this story. Uh, and I want y'all to know I've taken liberties with the setting and I may have gotten some of the railroad terms wrong. So my apologies to all railroad workers. Uh, but while the story is a, a, a little bit of fact, it's mostly the product of my imagination. It's called Barclay's End. P.B. and Ulysses Barclay live in a caboose, which P.B. bought at an auction in 1976. Hauling it out Smithdale Road, he obstructed traffic for nearly two hours, damaged several mailboxes and three oleander bushes, and crushed Miss Mamie Hurd's prize camellia bush along the way. But no one was really angry with P.B. In fact, most of the people who lived along the road came out of their houses to stand and wave as P.B. slowly meandered toward the turnoff on the Mars Hill, where he cleared a spot beside his old paint peeling wooden house. Everyone knew the story of the caboose, which P.B. had first seen on a mild December day some 28 years earlier. And all of the community knew, too, that the events which occurred on that particular day had a direct influence on P.B.'s decision to reside in a train car. P.B. Barclay's caboose, or Barclay's End, as the Enterprise Community refers to it, had been in its red varnish days the conveyor of the annual white-bearded visitor to Macomb, Mississippi, for seven consecutive years. During well, I think that it, it could possibly be an inaugural program for something that we could do on a regular basis in the summers, a uh, four to six week uh, uh, period of time, maybe in a smaller venue than obviously the State Theater uh, that would allow us to uh, have something on a regular Thursday night that, that people that are interested in this. But yes, this is my first time to, to do this other than I played somewhat of a supportive role on the Southwest Medical Foundation Gala. I was treasurer of that when we would bring in artists uh, like Fats Domino and Willie Nelson, uh, Alabama, uh, The Temptations, and I really enjoyed you know, the interaction of those artists and to see live people that you had been you know, following for a long time, their careers. But as far as putting it together, uh, and doing some things, you know, uh, I'm, I'm very much an amateur at it. I would, I would like to eventually uh, hear my songs on the radio someday and uh, walk into a Target or a Walmart and see my CDs on the shelf, you know, and have a video on CMT, you know, that, that's, that's always been a, a dream of mine. And um, so I guess uh, that's, that's kind of what I've, I'm working my way towards, you know, I'm, I'm just taking it one step at a time.